Good morning. <clears throat> Thank you for for uh, joining me on replay. I'm going to wait for some people to sign on live, and uh, we'll get started with a morning devotion. Hope you're having a good day wherever you're at, whatever time of day it is. Um, we're going to talk about faith real briefly this morning, and um, so I'm just going to wait just a minute. silence. Oh man, it's a Monday, ain't it? Let's see here. Judy, good morning. Thank you for uh, signing on. Hey Kevin, good morning. If you guys would, please let me know where you're watching from. And uh, we'll get started with a morning devotion. Um, you know, I know I'm inconsistent with these. Didn't do one last week at all. But we have, my sometimes my job takes me out earlier than normal. And um, so anyway, we, we want to try to get, get back to doing these when we can. This is something God put on my heart this morning about faith. Faith. Um, our faith is tried. Our faith is tested. Every single day, every day, um, the world we live in seems to be directly attacking our faith because of the doubts and insecurities and things like that. There's in the Bible there is a I, I don't want to say story because it's true, but I, it, there is a story in the Bible that is a fact it, it happened and it's one of the, the greatest miracles in the old testament in my opinion there's many miracles but and they're all amazing but this one here blows my mind this one is about three young men who were captive in a strange country they were um prisoners and they were in a situation where they were being uh, pressured to fit in. And, you know, there's such a parallel to this story that the world we live in today, we're being pressured from all sides. We're being pressured to fit in, to conform. I think one of the greatest pressures is, is division. We're being pressured to pick a side, you know. Whether you're a Democrat or Republican, or you're left or right, or Christian or Muslim, and all these, you know, there's always division. And and look, we have to take a stand. We do. We have to stand on the truth. And so, taking a stand, I believe at one time, probably didn't look as divisive as it does today. Today, it looks like it's hate and division. But that's because the enemy is very good at craft being at crafting a a uh, deception. So we have to stand. But look, you're not going to be able to stand if you don't have faith. And we all believe we have faith because we're, if you're saved, you're saved by faith. But is your faith strong enough to survive what's coming? Maybe that should have been the title of this video. Is your faith strong enough to survive what's coming? It's not going to get better. I know that's negative, and I know you don't want to hear nothing on a Monday like that, but I, I want to tell you the truth. We, we live in a fallen world, and we're in the last days. Now, if you'd have been born in the 40s or the 50s or 60s or even 70s, well, I was born in 71, but if you were... If you were born before then and, and and you were aging out now, let's say you're you've seen the world and you you're grow you've grown old and you're then you experienced a different world than what we're experiencing now, and our children and grandchildren are going to experience a different world than what we're experiencing because it's getting worse, it's getting more wicked, it's getting more evil, more immoral. Technology is is so amazing. 
And now there's AI that's coming. We don't even know what that's going to be like yet. And the Bible speaks of that. It says knowledge will increase. All these things are happening because the we're in the end time. So because we're in the end times and the last days, we need to really understand how important our faith is to the, the things we're going to face. And that's what the Lord spoke to my heart this morning. So this story in Daniel chapter 3 about these three guys that had no support system. They didn't have a church. They didn't have uh, a accountability partners. They had Daniel. Daniel was in the, in the area. And they, they had other people that were captive from their, their country, but they were in a strange land. And we're in a strange land, Christians. Whether you want to believe it or not, we're in a strange land. This America is not a Christian nation. I know everybody likes to say that. We're, we're not. We're a godless nation. That's what we are. Uh, the God of uh, money, the God of... We, we've got many gods. I shouldn't say godless. We're, we, we're, a, we're a nation of many gods. The God of uh, immorality. Uh, all these gods people have. And a lot of them are in churches today. These churches promote materialism, worldliness, all these things. And, and it's just a God. It's a, it's a little G, but it's a God. Idolatry is what it really is. And so we're, we're in a Babylonian society. That's what we're looking at. And if you're a true child of God and you're serving the Lord, number one, you're not going to fit in. Uh, number two, people are not going to like you. Everybody's not going to like you. And here's why. Because... When you serve God and you have the Spirit of God in you, you have an, uh, you have a presence, the Spirit of God, who convicts people that are living wrong and 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 irritates people. Um, and I'm not saying you're holier than thou. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying when you when you have the presence of God in your life and you're serving Him, Satan is not going to leave that unchallenged. You're, he's not going to just let you fly under the radar and you win people to Christ and, and not face adversity. This is a real battle. It's a war that we're in. Every single day that I get up, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel, I'm using the word feel, I don't feel like doing devotions. I don't feel like preaching. But I press on because of faith. I know that even if I don't feel like it, God will do something through it because I'm going by faith. The last thing I said to the Lord this morning before getting on here is I got up from my desk. I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. Whatever you want to do. I don't say that to, to, to lift me up because I, I'm not. I'm telling you how, how, how hard it is. For me, and I'm sure it's hard for you spiritually, because we're in a battle, we're in a real war, spiritual warfare. So we've got to understand there's a big difference between feelings and faith, right? I don't know about you, but when I first got saved, I loved that feeling of the goosebumps all over me, you know, the Holy Spirit bumps, you know, you feel to, and 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 the feel like you're floating away. Sometimes I had them experiences and. And when, when I was listening to worship or praising God or 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 just just the feelings that we got were and, and still have from time to time are awesome. But feelings come and go. Feelings change. Faith has to remain strong. And faith is something God has given you. Every single one of us have been given a measure of faith. That's what the Bible says. Jesus is the author of and finisher of our faith. He's the one that gave us the very faith that we got to be saved and the very faith that we have to take us to the end. It's all him. We can't take credit for it. But what he does expect us to do is cultivate our faith and to live by faith, walk by faith. Everything we do, have faith. Here's my question for you. When you're facing a hardship, when things are bad in your life and and, and or or you woke up this morning and you didn't really feel like reading your Bible. I'll use something small. Well, that's not really small, but you know what I mean. It's just like, man, I just need to get to work. I don't feel like sitting down. I, I need more. I need, I need four cups of coffee just to get up enough energy to do anything. By faith, 
we have to understand that their enemy is pressing on us from all sides, trying to defeat you, trying to stop you. He doesn't quit. And because you woke up on a Monday morning and maybe you had a great time at church Sunday, maybe everything was wonderful at church or, or wherever you worship, and you get up this morning and you're like, man, I got enough of God yesterday. You won't say that out loud, right? You're not going to say that out loud. But that's truthful, truthfully what some of us, th- I've, I've thought that, I get Lord, I, I preached hard. Um, people were saved that day. Lord, I think I'm just going to, I'm, I'm good today. I'm just going to kind of chill a little bit. No, you can't. Because that's when the enemy's really coming. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 3. We're in a strange land, great pressure, had no uh, no support system. They didn't have uh, iPhones where they could text somebody and say, hey, man, we're, we're about to be thrown in a furnace. Uh, can y'all, somebody call 911, somebody do something. They didn't have... Uh, any military to help them out because they were in a strange country. They didn't have any government for them because the government was against them. So they had all these things against them. And here's what they did. This is why this is so important for you today because this is what the Lord showed me. In Daniel 3, verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, the king told them, for you guys that don't know real quick, if you don't bow to this golden image, then you're going to be thrown into a furnace. You're going to be burned alive. Now, why would he do that? Because of a fear tactic. The only faith that they want is faith in them and their system. Does it sound familiar? What we're living in today in this world, this country, the only faith they want you to have is faith in them, faith in politics, faith in policy, faith in politicians. That's what, and, a, and sadly, sadly, so many Christians have jumped on the bandwagon of I'm putting their faith in a, a, a new president, a different president, nothing is going to change what the Bible says. But I want y'all, and there, there are there are men greater than me. That I, when I say greater than me, I, I admire these men as far as preachers and 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 their position. Some of them are all in on politics now. It's like, what are, are you? Are, my Bible doesn't say that when we get the right president or we get the right governor, that uh, Matthew 24, Jesus don't have anything in it that says, oh, by the way, um, wars and all the rumors of wars and disease and pestilence and sickness and, 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 and hatred and variances and false prophets and wolves, all that will go away if you get the right president. All that will go away if y'all change your policy. All that will go away if America decides to be a Christian nation again. It doesn't say anything like that. So where are we getting that from? Where does that come from? How do we get it in our heads that that if we put our faith in anything other than the word of God, that things are going to work out? See, it's a trap. And I'm one of the few preachers that will say it because people don't like it. They get mad. And I really don't care if you get mad. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm just being honest. I don't. I'm way past. I'm way past that. Where I'm at is, Lord, I don't really feel like doing this anyway. I got a lot on me, my plate anyway, and if I'm going to do it, I'm just going to do what you want me to do. And I think that's where he wants me to be. I really do. I think he finally has me where he wants. And and when he gets you to the place where you just don't care and just say, God, whatever you want, then you're out, you can get out of the way. Your faith has to be in the Lord and the word of God. That's your faith is not going to be strong enough to survive if it's in Donald Trump or if it's in Kamala or whoever else it is. It's not going to survive. Do you understand what I'm telling you? I didn't get on here to talk about politics, but I'm just being honest with you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were threatened. If you don't bow, if you don't worship the golden eye, if you don't worship the dollar, if you don't worship the American dream, if you don't worship having a big home, if you don't worship having a nice car, if you don't worship having the best job, if you don't worship uh, having a lot of savings so you can retire and live good, if you don't worship uh, sports, if you don't worship uh, athletes, if you don't worship singers, if you don't worship actors, if you don't worship this stuff, then we're coming for you. Think about it. There's a parallel. What is the idol in your life today? What is it that's wrote, that the devil has raised up and said, 
You better bow to this. You're going to bow to that. Your faith strong enough to survive? Let's see. They were facing all this, just as we're talking about, in a strange place. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, verse 16, Daniel 3, answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Wait a minute. They're talking to the king of Babylon. We, in other words, we don't even give you the, the respect that you think you deserve. I'm not, we're not even careful to answer you. I'm not, I'm not going to stress over it. I'm just going to tell you like it is, king. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So let's stop right there. They said, if and he will. What are they talking about? If it be so, our God is able to deliver us from the furnace. First of all, they're saying, we don't know if he's going to let us burn or not. Hello? We don't know if, you don't know what God will do. You don't know what he, God will let some stuff happen to you. I'm just, let's just cut through the junk. All this spiritual cliches and, and, and people saying, you know, if you pray hard enough, if you have enough faith, that's, that's bull. Okay, when it comes to this, because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And I'm going to tell you something. If his purpose and plan is that you go in a furnace, I don't care how much you pray. I don't care how many hallelujahs you say, how much money you give the church, whatever, you're going in the furnace. Do you understand? And here's why. Because he has a plan and a purpose for all our lives. Every one of us. He, he, it's, it's not that God doesn't love you. It's not that God's not going to protect you. It's that God is strengthening your faith and building your faith that when you do face adversity and you do face the fiery trials and you do face the things that are coming, that you won't bow to this golden image. You won't bow to the devil. In our society, it's getting to the place where you're going to have to make a stand. You know, I think about it all the time. We stand uh Standing physically is not a problem for me. And I know many of y'all like that. I'm ready. I'm ready to fight. Let's do it. Whatever we got to do. But I don't, you know, that's something that's really been on my mind lately. Ephesians chapter 6. What does it mean to stand? Does it mean we need to all stand together and get ready to fight? Or does it mean we stand in the spirit? We've got to get it straight and we've got to decide, is our faith strong enough? They said, we're not careful to answer you. He's able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So, in other words, if we go in the furnace, we're still going to be delivered from your hand. Now, that, that don't preach in a lot of churches. What if what if the preacher got up and told you, you, you said, you know, I'm, I'm going through a hard time. I got cancer. I got awful thing going on in my life, and I really need God to heal me. And what if he said, you know what? I'm a, we'll pray that he heals you, but if he doesn't heal you, it, you're in his will. You're doing what it, you, you're serving. You don't want to hear that. I wouldn't want to hear that. There are times when God heals. I've seen God heal. I have seen him heal, and I'm not blowing smoke. I have seen it. I've seen him heal tumors. I've seen him heal uh, all kind of things. But then I've also seen God not heal. I've, I've had the same goosebumps, the same fiery prayers, the same thing happening, and, and I've seen people not healed. I'm being honest. Why? Because he has a purpose and a plan. There are fiery trials that we're going to go through. You and I are going to face some things in life. And it's not about our comfort, y'all. It's not about being comfortable. It's about being faithful. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not comfortable. They were in a strange place, but they were faithful. And they told the king, look, he's able to keep us from going in your furnace, but if he doesn't, we'll be out of your hands. You can't do nothing to us. Now let's go to verse 18. But if not, but if not, in other words, my God is able to heal me. My God is able to deliver me. My God is able to save me from this situation. But if not, there it is right there. There is your test. That's your, what's it called, litmus test for your faith. 
Are you just as faithful? And I'm not preaching at you. I'm speaking to me this morning. Are you just as faithful when he doesn't answer your prayer? And I know how everybody says, oh, God always answers every prayer. No, he doesn't. Sometimes he's silent. Sometimes he's quiet. Well, that just means he's saying maybe. No. God is not a puppet. God is not your puppet. God is not... He, he's not this genie in a bottle where you rub this bottle and he just gives you his wishes. First of all, he's the great I am. He's all-knowing. He's way and far above us. He is God without us and with us. It doesn't matter. He's still God. He's God if nothing else exists. He's God that whom, whom all things through him do exist. So he doesn't jump through hoops. And there are prayers sometimes that God just doesn't answer. Thank God for unanswered prayer in a lot of cases, but there's times when he doesn't, and there's times when he does. And when he's not answering you, it's not because he doesn't love you. It's not because he's abandoned you, because he can't lie. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. If he's not answering you, it's because he's giving you a chance to, to do what? To be still and know that he is God. I know you don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it either. But that's what he's doing. He's growing your faith. He's preparing you and maybe another situation that you don't even know about that deal, that's involved with that. Let's go on. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Wow. They stood against an entire nation, the king, and said, we're not bowing. We're not bowing, and there's nothing you can do about it. Why? How could they do that? Because they had faith. They knew God. They knew the love of God. And this is what I want to get. This is the core of what I want to get to this morning. When you really know how much you're loved, and you really know how close God wants to be with you, this other stuff, this outside stuff, doesn't effect, affect that. People that are shallow in their faith and people that are lost, but I'm going to say some people that are saved but are, are babes in Christ don't understand this concept. They don't understand why since they've been saved, all hell's broke loose in their life. They don't understand why all of a sudden they've lost their job when they had a great job before they got saved or a lot of their friends don't want to talk to them or, or, or their health is bad now, but it was great when they were partying and all these other things. They don't understand it. You know why? Because you think some of this stuff that's being preached about, God wants you to have your best day now, and God wants to give you your Rolex and your new car and all this stuff, all this fake preaching has made people think it's all about the outside circumstances in my life that justify my walk with God. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. The outside circumstances in your life can go all to hell, and they can be crazy. But that doesn't change the fact that God loves you and is with you and has brought you in it and going to bring you through it. Then was Nebuchadnezzar's full of fury and the form of his vision. He was changed against Shadrach, Meshach. In other words, he kind of liked them guys. He kind of liked them. He's like, you know, these young kids, they're in my kingdom. They're faithful to their God. They're, they're honest. They, they do the right thing. They got integrity. I'd like to have them a part of my kingdom. I'm, this is, I'm just paraphrasing. That's probably what he thought because it says his visage was changed against them. In other words, he must have liked them. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it wants to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in the army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Okay. So you stood for what was right. You stood up for God, and he let you down. You, you stood for God, and he let you fall on your face. Right? Is that what happened? You stood for God, and it's still the worst thing happened. Now, there's some out there going, Brother, I, I, I would never think like that. Well, there are people that feel like that. They may not say it, but they feel like it. Because they stood for God, they did the right thing, and they got punished for it. Right? These guys here, they stood for the right thing. They stood up for God. But they got punished for it. Did they? Did they get punished? No, they got rewarded. Rewarded with what? Their best day now? 
No, they got rewarded with being able to suffer for the cause of Christ in our in our in our time, but in their time, suffer for their for God to stand boldly. What do you mean suffer? Because even though they stood and even though they done all they were supposed to do, they didn't know if they were going to be burned or not. They didn't know what what God was going to do. They just knew that God wasn't going to allow them to fall into the king's hand. Now, how could they have known that? Because they had faith. They said, no matter what happens to my body, no matter what happens to my life, I'm God's and he is mine and ain't a devil in hell or anybody else that can take that away from me. That's the kind of faith that it's going to take in these last days for you and I to be able to survive the things that are coming. Our faith is going to strengthen instead of decreasing. Now, if you don't get a hold of this, your faith is going to become weary. You're going to get to the place where you feel like you're being bombarded. If you put everything you got and how you feel or how good things that happen to you, uh, and that's how you justify whether you're with God or not, you're going to, you're going to fall. Put it in God. And what he's doing in your life, whether it's good or bad, trust him. And I know how hard that is, but trust him. Because when you go in the furnace, you're not going to go in the way you want to go in. It's not going to happen the way you want it to happen. Not only did he heat the furnace seven times hotter, but he commanded to get the strong men of his army to bind them up. First of all, they're willing to die for what they believe. Are you willing to die for your faith? Am I? Think about that. You know, you may get to a point where you are. You know what? Have you seen, I got to stand up. Have you seen, well, maybe I shouldn't stand up. Have you seen these people, these crazy people that are in these rallies like the um, the trans or LBTQ and all this other stuff, when somebody when they approach somebody that's preaching the gospel like a street preacher, they will get in their face and go, ah, just scream like crazy, demonic screaming. It won't stop. And you just like, man, I, you can't do what you think. And you're sitting there thinking, these people are crazy. That's, what's, that's what we have in this country, guys, and that's what's growing. It's not the LGBTQ and all that stuff at the trans, it's the demonic influence on this world that is growing. They're a part of it, but so are uh, other outlets or other places um, of, of, of immorality. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's intensifying. And you have your faith needs to increase because the pressure is going to increase. And when the enemy comes at you, he's not going to come at you the way you think he will. See, they could have, the king could have him in, had him thrown in by the, the least person in his army. They were willing to die. But what did he do? He said, I want the strong men. I want the ones that will intimidate them. I, you know what? I believe that when he asked for the strong men, the king might have been giving them another chance. See, you have to look at it for in context and and the I, again i believe the king kind of liked these guys because he says it's he changed when they made him mad his whole vision they said vision but i think his vision his whole attitude toward him changed he got angry he gets to strong men well why would he get to strong men to intimidate them right he wants to intimidate them and that's what the devil does he will intimidate you they still wouldn't back down they're not going to give in. Then these men were bound in their coats and their hoses and their hats and other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor did they even smell like smoke or fire. had No fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God. Listen now. It, just, a, <laughs> just a few short minutes ago, he was trying to get them to bow to a golden idol a golden image. That was who he wanted them to worship. Well, a lot's changed now. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. There's your reward. You know, I mentioned... They stood, they did what was right, and they were punished for it. That's, that's what the American gospel will tell you. It's punishment. Because God really just wants you to be healthy, happy, rich, prosperous. That's what all these fake preachers will tell you. No, I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes you're going to go in the furnace. Sometimes things ain't going to be like you want. And it's not punishment. There's a great reward on the other side because your faith is strengthened. You've demonstrated the glo- how the glory of God has prevailed in your life and a witness to all these folks. So what does it mean to stand? I just I think God just give it to me. What does it mean to stand as in Ephesians 6? It means I need to grab my gear and get ready to crack some skulls? No. It means to stand in the midst of whatever it is. And watch God deliver and fight the battles for us. And if God's will is that you're martyred, if we're we're killed for our faith, if that's God's will, then that has to be good enough for us. That's the kind of faith that it's going to take to survive the things that are coming. Because if you don't, if you haven't settled that, if you're not there, then you're going to be swayed. It's just what was on my heart this morning. I hope everybody has a wonderful day today and realize this week, no matter what happens, no matter what comes your way, God already knew it was going to happen. He sends blessings. He's made a way where there is no way. He's already made a way through whatever you're facing. He's already done it. Trust him. Trust him. I dare you to trust him, no matter what you're facing. He loves you. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in his sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. (laughs) 